What's up you guys, welcome back to another one. If you are new to the channel, I am Gold Pony. I do new car truck SUV reviews on YouTube. And today, we are in the brand new 2022 Nissan Kicks, courtesy of Younger Nissan in Frederick, Maryland. For more information on their inventory, please feel free to check out the link in the description box below. So this one was recently refreshed for the 2021 model year. So not a whole lot of changes for the 2022 model year, but I will say this one has an excellent starting price point, actually coming in at less than $20,000 to start here and so ultimately in this video we will be testing out and going over everything about this one from acceleration to braking steering feel ride quality sound system exhaust clip all that fun stuff so having said all of that what do you guys say let's just go ahead and jump right into it and as always let's start with pricing as expected there are a few different trim levels for the 2022 kicks first one being the s starting at nineteen thousand seven hundred dollars then there is the sv which is the one we are in today starting at twenty one thousand five hundred and fifty dollars and lastly the sr starting at twenty two thousand two hundred and forty dollars and by the way that is a just slightly modest price bump from the 2021 model year of only a hundred dollars and i say only because a lot of the other manufacturers right now are giving quite a bit more of a price bump than that so only a hundred bucks that's actually really good but nonetheless regardless of trim level that you go with the power plant on the new kicks is going to be the same powering this little beast is a 1.6 liter naturally aspirated inline four cylinder putting out 122 horsepower at 6300 rpm 114 pound feet of torque coming in at 4000 rpm power sent to the front wheels through a cvt zero to 60 time coming in approximately 10.1 seconds according to motor trend we'll test that out here in a little bit but mpg number then coming in at 31 in the city 36 on the highway taking regular unleaded fuel but so then before we do that acceleration test i did want to mention to you guys the drive mode there is one of them and it is hidden as well so the singular drive mode is going to be a sport driving mode and it is actually a horizontal button a horizontal line on a button located just kind of underneath the shifter you just simply press that it's going to instantly kind of downshift for you holding the rpms at a much higher level and it's going to adjust the throttle response response then as well so now that we got all of that out of the way what do you guys say let's go ahead and find a straightaway let's put the kicks here to the test and let's see how quickly we can get our new 2022 kicks here up to speed all right let's push our sport button here it's going to display an s up on the digital portion of the gauges here to let us know we are in sport in three two one well it's loud actually that's, oh my gosh, this is a CVT. That's simulated an automatic extremely well. One of the better CVTs that I've driven because it doesn't feel like a CVT. That was kind of cool. Having said that, yeah, it's slow. Um, <laughs> I'm just gonna be honest there, but I like hearing the engine noise. It makes you feel like you're going faster than you actually are. And the other thing is, this is a naturally aspirated engine, which is kind of rare these days because so many manufacturers are going with turbocharged engines for better gas mileage overall. So the fact that it's naturally aspirated is a good thing in my opinion because that means traditionally it's going to be a more reliable engine as opposed to if it were to be turbocharged so i like that as well actually but having said that again not the quickest thing in the world but anyways to go along with that acceleration as always braking is equally important and so as expected you will find four wheel disc brakes coming standard for all trim levels across the board as far as that 60 year stopping distance goes it's actually going to come in at a very impressive 119 feet and it feels like that definitely one of the better braking feels i have felt in quite a while as far as entry-level cars like this goes it immediately brings you to a stop definitely on the firm side as far as braking feel goes which i love braking feel is 100 percent on point here in the kick so i'm a huge fan of that then touching on suspension and handling up front you're going to get an independent strut type front suspension in the back torsen beam rear axle front stabilizer bar as well as far as ride quality goes honestly it's actually been perfectly fine it's kind of what i expected the kicks to be so definitely shouldn't have any issues there as far as steering feel goes it definitely wouldn't have minded if they firmed up the steering a little bit it definitely kind of leans more on the looser side of things and quite honestly i think of the kicks as kind of more of a sportier car a little more fun to drive car than what the steering feedback is giving me right now so nissan if you're watching this wouldn't have minded if you firmed up that steering just a little bit because it does tend to lean a little bit on the looser side of things but having said that as far as cabin noise goes i'm coming up on what 10 miles 
per hour right now, now coming to a stop. But as far as cabin noise goes, you do tend to get a decent amount of road noise when you get up in the higher speeds, but that's to be expected at a vehicle of this size and for what this vehicle is priced at. Honestly, it wouldn't bother me personally, but just expect it as you traditionally would in let's say a compact car. And touching on visibility, I can see perfectly fine out the back. I will say the second row headrests are kind of big, but because of the size of the kicks and it not being that big of a vehicle, you're definitely not gonna have any issues with visibility, but pretty much rounds out the performance segment of this review, guys. Let's now go ahead and take a look at the exterior of our brand new 2022 Nissan Kicks. All right, so here she is, you guys, the new 2022 Nissan Kicks. Official exterior color name is gray with a black roof. That is pretty elaborate. But anyways, let's go ahead and start up front on this one. Chrome V-Motion front grille is going to come standard with the S trim and the S V trim levels. However, there is a dark chrome V-Motion front grille if you were to go with that SR trim level and you will find a black front lip with some added chrome detail found on that front lip then as well. To the sides, halogen headlights do come standard for the S trim level and the SV. They will of course come with the automatic feature, meaning when it starts to get dark at night, the headlights are going to turn on automatically for you there. LED headlights, however, coming with the SR trim level, and that will come with LED signature lighting and LED daytime running lights then as well. And LED fog lights also coming with that SR trim, but pretty much rounds out the front end of this one. Let's now go ahead and make our way to the side of the kicks. It's open now since we are around to the side of this one. Silver roof rails coming with the SV trim level. I think you guys can see those up top there. Black roof rails, however, coming with the SR. SR, of course, being the more sporty trim level. Silver exterior door trim for the SR trim as well. You will find a floating roof line towards the back on that C pillar. However, you're not really gonna be able to tell in ours because we have an all black roof after all, but body colored door handles are gonna come with the SV and SR trim level. So you're not gonna get that with the S. Body colored side mirrors coming with the SV. Gloss black side mirrors coming with the SR again. Heated side mirrors though, coming with both the SV and SR trims. And you will actually get LED integrated turn signals if you were to go with that SR trim then. Then take a look down at the wheel configuration. 16 inch steel wheels with covers coming with the S. 17 inch aluminum alloys then coming with the SV and SR. But pretty much rounds out the side profile. Let's now go ahead and make our way to the back. It's up now since we are around to the back of this one. Gloss black shark fin antenna all the way to the top, just behind that rear spoiler with an integrated brake light, just behind that rear window wiper. And you guys can see there is a high mount stop lamp up top there as well. Of course, you will find some trim level badging found on the right side there. So if you ever wander onto a Nissan lot on a Sunday, perhaps, that is where you're gonna wanna go ahead and look if you're curious what trim you were looking at. Just below it all, you will find a body color rear diffuser coming standard across the board with a single exhaust outlet tucked away there to the right. So having said that, I do believe you guys know what we have to do next. As always, here is that exhaust clip. It's open now since we are around to the back of the kicks. When it comes to opening that rear lift gate, it is a manual lift gate that does come standard across the board. So simply just lift up on the handle on the rear lift gate itself. Once opened up, cargo capacity comes in at 35.4 cubic feet. If that was not enough space, there is a 60-40 split, meaning the rear seats do fold down for quite a bit of extra space then if you needed it. There are four cargo tie-down hooks. There is a cargo cover that is gonna be optional at least on the SR trim. There is some cargo lighting back there, of course, as well. There are actually some grocery bag hooks, surprisingly, back there as well, which is kind of nice to see. And then if you were to lift up underneath of that cargo floor, you're actually going to find a spare tire underneath there as well then. But then making our way up to the rear legroom, that comes in at 33.5 inches. So for reference, I mean, even six feet tall, this is how much space I had in those rear seats there. And now there is no rear ventilation. There's no rear center armrest with cup holders. But what I did really like back there was there were two USB charging ports. And so you typically won't find that at this price point in 
the kicks more or less. So I loved seeing that. So if you have kids in the back that wanna charge up their tablets or whatever, they are hooked up because there are two USB charging ports. So that's definitely pretty nice. And of course there is a passenger side seat back map pocket back there as well. But then make our way to the front seats, manually adjustable cloth seating does come standard actually for all trim levels across the board. However, if you were to go with that SR trim, you're actually gonna get a sport cloth with orange stitching to kind of differentiate itself there. Leatherette seating is going to be optional on the SR and heated front seats are also going to be optional then on the SR. As far as seat comfort goes, eh, it's not the most comfortable seats I've ever sat in. To be quite honest, they're a little bit on the firm side. So I guess it's to be expected though with this particular price point. But then take a look at the steering wheel. I actually am a big fan of the steering wheel here. It is tilt and telescoping. It did telescope out pretty far as well. It will be leather wrapped for the SR trim level. Otherwise it is wrapped in urethane like you're currently looking at. And my very favorite part, it is a flat bottom as well that comes standard for all trim levels. And a heated steering wheel is actually gonna be optional on the SR then as well. Then make our way to the startup. Let me start by showing you guys the key here. You do have your Nissan logo all the way to the top. Just below that, you got lock, unlock, and the circular button is gonna be your remote start, which comes standard on the SV and SR trims if you wanted that. But it is all keyless entry with the push button start for all trim levels, even the S. So that is pretty cool. So all I'm going to do here is simply put my foot on the brake and press that engine start button located just to the left of the shifter. And so once started up, there is a digital gauge cluster giving you your tachometer on the left and essentially everything else. Then your speedometer is going to be on the right. But I do like the digital gauge cluster and it is customizable by using some steering wheel mounted controls as well, which is pretty cool. But essentially it's going to give you your tachometer, like I said, how many miles you have left until you hit empty. Trip A, trip B, outside temperature. Pretty much all of the basics you could possibly want on a digital portion of the gauges up there. Then make our way to overall interior quality. You will get automatic climate control for the SV and SR trim levels, meaning you set a temperature and it's gonna automatically hit that then for you. There is going to be a frameless rear view mirror with home light controls that's optional for $110, quite honestly. That's probably an option I would go with because honestly, for home light controls and a frameless mirror, typically that's a few hundred dollars with other manufacturers. So the fact that it's only 110 is actually really nice. Just the front of the shifter, you have a phone charging port, USB charging port, 12 volt power outlet, and some nice rubberized storage to put your cell phone. You actually have a lecture mechanical parking brake up there as well. Behind the shifter then, you got your dual cup holders, of course, and within the center armrest, very, very little bit of storage, not a whole lot going on there. But overall, it's definitely finished more on the basic side of things. Just take a look at the doors you got a chrome door handle but that's pretty much the extent of the elaborateness on these doors it's just a bunch of black plastic more or less so again for this price point i suppose it is to be expected but then taking a look at the infotainment screen seven inch color touchscreen display coming with the s eight inch color touchscreen display coming with the sv and sr trims Either way though, you still get Bluetooth and audio streaming. You still get Android Auto, Apple CarPlay. Yes, even for the S trim level. So you gotta love that. And of course, check out your radio information up there as well. And so by the way, when it comes to the sound systems, there's one of them, but then there's another optional one. So the six speaker, six speaker sound system is gonna come standard actually on all trim levels, but there is also an optional sound system only for the SR trim, but that's gonna be an eight speaker Bose sound system. But we don't have that one today. We of course do have the six speaker. So what do you guys say? Let's go ahead and turn on the radio see what we got playing today and let's test out the clarity of this one <laughs> bad actually for a six speaker sound system the bass was 100 on point for six speakers again for six speakers but clarity oh you could at least a little more clarity but again it's only six speakers honestly for that many that's not that bad i've definitely heard worse but last thing i want to mention to you guys on the infotainment screen is when you do put the kicks in reverse you will find a rear view camera coming standard across the board letting you know who or what is behind you which is always is going to lead us into safety and so to start front side side current airbags do come standard driver and passenger knee airbag as well in the back you're gonna have latch aka lower anchors to tethers to children for the rear car seats rear child door locks tire pressure monitoring system but also coming standard on all trim levels will be forward collision warning autonomous emergency braking with pedestrian detection lane departure warning rear automatic braking a blind spot monitor with rear cross traffic alert high beam assist, rear sonar system, and hill start assist then as well. So overall, when it comes to my final thoughts here of the kicks, excellent starting price point. The fact that you can get a vehicle like this 
for under 20 grand starting price is absolutely amazing. So I'm definitely a big fan of that. I like the unique styling as well. This is definitely my kind of styling. It's definitely something you're not gonna blend in with with every other vehicle on the road. So I'm a big fan of that. A lot of really great advanced safety as well. You guys heard all of those standard safety features. Even on the S trim level, you get a blind spot monitoring system. You get automatic high beams as well. So that is definitely something that is not always the case on other manufacturers. As far as the room for improvement goes, yeah, it's a bit slow. So I will say that the interior quality is definitely on the basic side as well. Wouldn't have minded a full digital gauge cluster. I mean, if you're comparing it to like the Volkswagen Taos, let's say, I know that comes with a full digital gauge cluster and also wouldn't have minded if there was at least an option for all wheel drive on this thing, seeing as it is kind of a crossover and a lot of crossovers will come with that. But anyways, let me know what you guys think of the new kicks in the comments section below. That is about it for this one, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Feel free to follow me on social media at the bottom of the screen if you wanted to see what's coming next on the channel before it gets to YouTube. Be sure to hit the subscribe and the bell notification button if you're into new car reviews. That is what we do here on this channel. After all, do appreciate you guys watching more than you know, and I will see you guys all in the next video. Stay gold.